All right, man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as you do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Basil has an outstanding show here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also, it's a great newsletter, the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get the opening call, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You'll see it right under featured content. You just hit the subscribe button to the opening call. You can get the opening call for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $695, which is a savings of $199 or 22%. Get it for a year for eleven ninety five, which is a savings of five hundred ninety three dollars or thirty three percent. When you come over and you subscribe, folks, you're going to see that Basil has about eleven to twelve archives on there. You really get to understand the markets. You're going to really get to understand the Chapman wave. And guess what? You get it for thirty days. It works for you. Awesome. You just continue to get it. For some reason, it doesn't work for you, folks. You get your money back. So check it out. We got a traders market out here in a big way. You got a lot of different trades. You got a lot of different waves running back and forth. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you doing there? Uh, yeah, you know, I can't complain because, you know, you, it's cold. Well, it might not be. It's 57 here today. What, what is it up there? Like well, 37 think, or 57? Yeah, no, I think it's gone to about uh, 40, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just what you get used to. You know, for I us, know. when we go from zero degrees to 40, it's, that's great. It, exactly. And I'm <laughs> and just a baby. And your blood used to it. I remember when I came from South Africa a long time ago, having uh, grown up where the winters are exactly the opposite of here, where it's yes. very short winter, but it can be very cold and very damp, and there you weren't set up with heaters and everything like today. So the winters I found really cold, even though they were short. So it's what your blood gets used to, I guess. Yeah, it is. There's no doubt. So... Your blood so gets used. How about our heads getting used to where we are in this market, Basil? So this is really fascinating. Look, I like to use some very simple techniques. I use some complex ones, but basically what we're looking at is we're trying to identify the, the the lowest low and then look for higher highs. We label the alphabetically on the way up. When we get to the fourth highest peak, peak A, peak B, peak C is three, peak D is the fourth one. As you saw right here, 36,952 in the Dow on the 5th of January, tumbled down to 33,150. Uh, but that was only two legs down. They went to a trough B. That's usually a good sign that if there is a bounce, you're going to bounce quite well. So what I've been anticipating, and we, we, we um, uh, saw call long from a long time ago, we're trying to add to the Dow, the diamonds, because I think what's happening is, you see this, I've got this little narrow channel right here. Basically, I consider this a wedge. It's like a declining, expanding cone. So you make lower highs and much lower lows. And at some point, it makes it kind of a base. And then it turns around and tries to tackle the resistance line. What I usually do is within the resistance line, I draw just two little lines. And that's like a repellent zone. And look how many times the Dow has been yes. repelled from this. All of a sudden, we, we were touching it earlier this morning or the, by, by midday, and then there was a sharp pullback, pulled back over 100 points from the high, and then you got the second burst of energy. Now, what's really important about the second burst of energy is that if there is a break above this trend line, then all of a sudden the repellent zone becomes a propellant zone, and that's really what you want to see. So I'm going to make it as simple as possible. The Dow's at 35,440. If at any point there is a close, it can't, now I don't. I like often to see a pop up. You can pull back, but I want to see it make a leg. In this case, I want to see trading at the thirty-five thousand six hundred area, which is not too far from here. But we have got a lot of things going on this week. But if there is, then all of a sudden, I think we're going to start to see a leg C to the upside above thirty-five thousand six seventy-nine, and that'll probably take the the stochastic above eighty percent, the MACD strong, and probably that will also turn the nine-period moving average positive by crossing the fourteen-period moving average. I'm talking about the daily chart. So. So the Dow is kind of our focus has been on the Dow and the Dow type stocks. We we, we are along the S and P. We're along the S and P. The 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 um, this is the S P Y V. So this is the most for me. I never really looked at this before, but for the last couple of weeks, I've been saying you know, well actually more than that, I've been saying value has been coming back. So we decided we would go into a value, the value part of the S&P, and it seems to be holding now, now even as we're looking at, this is up 0.65%, and the SPY is up 0.65%. Uh, 
six nine. So it's it's in parallel, but I want you to see how this move to either cyclicals or value is going to unfold. So we've got a, a mixed portfolio. We only have long positions. We don't have any short positions, not even thinking of it right now. And the other thing that's very important is I've been saying to subscribers, why on earth would we see the iShares broker dealer and security ETF rallying so sharply near the 116.25 all time high uh, we've been long since the 45s back in 2020 at the low, but we've, we're trying to add through, uh, we've added through Schwab and S, and this is also acting very well. Um, it's almost at coming back to the previous high of the 14th of January of 95.62. And here's the thing that I want to discuss with you. We've seen so many stocks and indexes go to within pennies of the previous high and then pull back if they're able to push um, I would say not just above, but have a couple of closes above. Like, look, the crude oil back in October of 2000 and I think it was 18. Let me just pull this up. Yeah. Back in 2018, made a high of 85.65. Plunged down to $7.61. We know all about that back yes. in April of 2020. But look what it did. It came all the way back to, uh, was it, I think it was 93, let me just give you the figure. So what's happened is, yep, 93.17, this is a continuous contract. That's quite a bit above the 85. So that says to me that even though I've got a very short term, uh, near term, let's say, potential pullback coming here in the, in the crude oil, um, the fact that it's closed a couple of times above that previous high of the October of 2018 kind of says that you look at the weekly and my weekly charts in the XLE and the crude oil only in leg C. So this is such a complex market because if you're looking at, you were talking about the QQQ, but look at the QQQ, how, under, how it's been underperforming. Even here, look, four days has just been a little narrow wedge. Uh, it's actually a sorry, rectangle. So we've been very selective. We've remained long the DBA, which is a commodity index. We've, in a way, kind of avoided the whole area of the tech sector, uh, like the Qs. We're going for you know, value. We're going for cyclicals. If you look at the SLX, look at the way the, the, um, silver, the silver ETF is acting. Look at this, a very nice rally. Is it going to get to the left side high? It's at 57 and a quarter. Is it going to get to this first left side high of 58 and break out? So those are the questions. So I love the market as we're looking at it right now, but it is extremely selective. And you had spoken about uh, the bonds. If you look at the JNK, and I always say the fourth highest PPD is where you've got to be careful. In the monthly chart, it made a high at about 110. It's now trading at 104. So we've got to watch these bonds really close to the Sparkly's high yield bond. Yeah, there's no doubt, man. You got a yeah. prison company out there today, folks. The people that feed the prisoners and the phone calls, we know that's a big scandal. The bottom line, they're paying 11.5% for money today. Like, really? really? Yeah, exactly. Wow. Listen, folks, real easy to get Basil's newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN. Hit that opening call. Basil, you have a great one. Safe one. We look forward to the show tomorrow. Thank you, Tom. You Thank too. you.